Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power 3x to the 6th equals 16, and we're going to be solving for x values. We've done similar problems before, but I don't think we used two different methods. So let's go ahead and solve this in two different ways. And let's start with the first method. Now, for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides. I want to bring this uh, variable down. So let's go ahead and ln both sides. ln is the natural log, which is the base e, log with base e. And now this brings down the exponent here. So we can get 3x to the 6 multiplied by ln x equals ln 16. Great. Now let's go ahead and work this out a little bit to, we want to, you know, simplify this a little bit. Let's go ahead and do this. I want to use variables. So in other words, I want to change the variable or maybe I should say substitution. So let's go ahead and use substitution here. I'm going to go ahead and replace ln x with t. You can use any variable you want, but I like t. So if you set ln x equal to t, then from here by definition, x would be e to the power t. And we can go ahead and plug it in. But that will be raised to the 6th power, so it's going to be 3 e to the 6t multiplied by t equals ln 16. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and work this out a little bit more. Let's first divide both sides by 3 and switch these around. I'm going to put this in a certain form such that it's going to look like t times e to the t or something times e to the power something. Make sense? We're going to use a very special function for that which is called Lambert's W function. Hopefully you're familiar with that because I've done quite a few videos. Maybe you've seen it somewhere else. But the way it works is basically if you have something like, let's say, z e to the z, and you use Lambert's W function on this, the output would be just z. So in other words, it's the inverse function uh, for z e to the z. And we're going to use it. But we don't have that structure yet because we have t and 6t. So how do you make that happen? Multiply both sides by 6. That will be the right answer. And of course, 3 goes into 6 two times. So this will simplify what's on the right-hand side. Now, this is going to be our z, right? They have to be the same. And if you apply Lambert's W function on both sides like this and like that, you'll be getting something like this because that the output is going to be 6t and the right hand side can be written as Lambert W of 2 ln 16. Now the left hand side is pretty simple but we still have the Lambert W function on the right hand side which we should be able to simplify. Sometimes it doesn't simplify nicely and there's an you know um, not we can't find it exactly but using a calculator you can approximate it. But in this case, it does simplify, which you'll find out a little later why. But let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to write 2 ln 16 in such a way that uh, when I apply Lambert's W, it's going to come out nicely. And how can I do that? You can play with the numbers a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. I can write first uh, ln 16 as 4 squared and then take this. 2, again, it's kind of playing with the exponents and using properties of logarithms. I'm going to multiply that 2 by the other 2, so that's going to make a 4, and this will give us 4 ln 4. They're equivalent, right? But the problem is I don't have t to the t or z to the z or c to the c. But we can make it happen. We can kind of write this as ln 4 times e to the power ln 4. That's what 4 is, right? We can write 4 as e to the power ln 4, and that does the trick. Now notice that after doing this transformation, we can now apply Lambert's W function, and our new z value is going to be this one. So when I apply W on this, it's going to give me ln 4. Beautiful, right? Nice and easy. Now, from here we can solve for t. t is just going to be ln 4 divided by 6. And that can definitely be simplified because 4 is ln 2 squared, which can be written as 2 ln 2, and then 2 goes into 6 3 times, and we get ln 2 divided by 3 for t. But t is not the end goal. 
because we are solving for x. But what's the relationship? Here's the relationship. And since you know t, you can either do this. Since we are trying to find x, you can directly find it from here, x is e to the t, or set ln x equal to t. It doesn't matter, same idea. But let's just use the second one. x is equal to e to the power t. And t is ln 2 over 3, so this would be the answer. But can we simplify it? Absolutely. How? That's a good question. We can first of all write this as e to the power ln 2 to the power 1 third, because exponents are multiplied, again, using properties of exponents. And then, think about the meaning of e to the power ln x. It's x, right? So e to the power ln 2 would be 2, just 2, and this would be 2 to the power 1 third. So x is equal to 2 to the power 1 third, which can also be written as the cube root of 2. Here's the thing. In the complex world, 2 has 3 cube roots. In the real world, 2 only has 1 cube root, which is just the cube root of 2, right? So do you think other cube roots of 2 will satisfy this equation? That would be a good question, right? We'll explore that, hopefully, with the second method. But for now, let's just settle with this value, okay? That's my x value with the first method. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because the second method is... Also nice, but you'll get to decide which one is nicer, okay? Let me know. Now, we have x to the power 3, x to the 6 equals 16. I don't know if I shared the general form with you, but I was on a plane one day. Anyways, by the way, I just recently visited uh, Vancouver, uh, Washington. I mean, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, if you're from there, please let me know. Uh, it's a really nice, uh, beautiful city with um, lots of, um, you know, uh, good things like uh, waterfalls, lakes, beautiful trees. It's amazing. I live in California, so it's a huge difference. We kind of live in a desert, you know? Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. And the motivation behind that is kind of easy to see because when we, when we do, we're going to multiply the 3 by 2, which is going to give us a 6, and I have another 6 here. You'll see in a little bit why that's helpful, but this is going to give us x to the power 6x to the 6, and 16 squared can be written in so many ways. If you want, you can write it as 256 for now and then convert it later on. We'll do that. Now, here's the tricky part, or the nicest part, I should say. Notice that we can put this 6 inside like this, right? So I can kind of write this as x to the power 6 to the power x to the power 6. You got that? It's beautiful, right? And now this becomes something like t to the power t. So without using Lambert's W function, we're actually getting that type of structure. And now is the time to write 256 as not 16 squared, not 2 to the 8th, but 4 to the 4th. Because I want the base and the exponent to be the same. And now we can kind of do the one-to-one -one correspondence. And this should give us x to the power 6 equals 4, which can then be written as x cubed equals 2, but this also implies x cubed equals negative 2. We'll explore both of these values, don't worry, but the first one gives us the cube root of 2. Again, the complex cube roots, you're going to let me know what you think about those. But the cube root of a negative number also works. It's just the opposite. But do you think that will work? Looks like it will, but let's go back to the original problem because we have to check with the originals. So this is my original equation. And now I'm claiming that, hey, can x be, I know that this is going to work, but can it be also the negative one, right? You can pull the negative out, by the way. So if x is negative cube root of 2, then I'm going to raise it to the power 3 times x to the 6, which happens to be 4, by the way. It's going to be 3 times 4. And now this is going to be 12. And when I raise a negative base to the 12th power, obviously it is going to work because it's going to make it positive. For the real case, right? So it looks like that's going to work. But with the Lambert's W, we did not find two solutions. And again, you're going to let me know what you think about the complex cases. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.